right. Good evening. It's good to see everybody tonight. My, how the weather has changed tonight from this morning. But maybe we'll get some rain in the near near future. But got just a few announcements tonight. Uh, I need some volunteers to help pick up cards. If I could get some boys to help me do that. Um, just a few announcements here uh, as we get going. Appreciate all the men who were able to come for our meeting this afternoon. Uh, we had a great meeting with lots of input. And uh, just want to really push this uh, evangelism seminar we have coming up. Just think it's going to be a great growth opportunity for uh, all of our, our congregation. Uh, as we've been announcing, we've got Rob Whitaker coming uh, who works with House to House, Heart to Heart. And uh, he'll be here with us on Sunday. We'll have a regular day as we normally would with our Sunday morning and our Sunday evening service. Uh, then there will be a couple of sessions on Monday evening and then a split session on Tuesday night, a session for the men and uh, also Rob's wife will have a, a session for the ladies uh, on Tuesday night. And uh, all of this is focused on helping us to uh, reach out into our community uh, help bring people to uh, to the Lord, bring them into the church, and uh, he has some great ideas and great uh, great lessons to help encourage us in that way. I know it's going to be uh, very beneficial for all of us. So let's keep June 26th through the 28th circled on our calendars. Uh, there are, there's a brochure on the bulletin board if you'd like to uh, read a little bit more on this uh, and uh, just uh, as uh, Clint urged us to do in the meeting today. Uh, as well, uh, just urge everyone to be praying about this effort, if you will, uh, on a regular basis as you think about it. Remember this in your prayers, and uh, we think it's going to be a, a great success. As we mentioned this morning, the financial reports are prepared. They're in the bins. If you didn't get a chance to get one of those this morning, you can do that tonight. Uh, also, uh, just a reminder that uh, the, the Liggetts are hosting a family devotional tonight after services, and we'll meet at, at Tony and Lori's barn uh, immediately after services tonight for that. Bridal teas coming up next Sunday afternoon uh, from 2 to 3.30 here at the church building, honoring uh, Abby McDaniel, bride-elect of Bill Webb. Let's continue to remember all of those we have listed on our prayer list, and uh, if you have additions or, that we need to make, please be sure to let us know. All right, guys, I can go ahead. Tonight, our opening prayer will be led by Glenn Airy. Our songs will be led by Craig Medlin. And our closing prayer will be led by Stephen Krauss. And we're very excited to have uh, Randy McAdams with us tonight. Uh, Randy is a member of the McKenzie Church of Christ. His wife, Judy, is here with him as well. And uh, he works also with uh, Healing Hands International. And uh, he's going to talk to us tonight about a, a project called the Magi Box. And uh, this is just a, a great opportunity for us to be, be a part of some benevolent work. And so we appreciate him taking time to come and be with us tonight, talk to us about this project. And so at the appropriate time, we'll, we'll turn the service over to him to do that. This time, let's all join in together. Let us pray together. Our Holy and Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, Lord, for this day that You have given us, this first day of the week, in which we have been allowed to gather here and to offer our worship unto Thee. We pray, Father, that each time we are given this opportunity that we would be mindful of what a joy it is and what a responsibility that we have to get together to do this, to encourage one another, to exhort one another in the faith. We thank the Lord for the design of the church. We thank you, Father, for your Son, who is the head of this body. And we're thankful, Father, for his life, for his sacrifice, for his example, and for the gospel that he has helped to usher in through his apostles. And Father, we pray that we would be mindful of the soul that each one of us possesses, 
We pray, Father, that we would think often about eternity. We think, we pray, Father, that we would prioritize those things that come about in our daily lives. That we can have the time and set aside the time that we ought for Thee and for Thy service. Father, we ask for Thy strength in this in our daily walk. We also ask for Your forgiveness where we fall short as we do often. Father, we pray that as You build us up that we would be mindful of others who are in need of the Gospel. We thank Thee, Father, for opportunities about which we will hear tonight to reach out into the mission fields that are around us to help others who are in need to be of benevolence as we have been taught that we should be to be compassionate of others to give to others as you've given to us we ask father for the work of this church to continue in a great way here as we are planted here to do thy will we pray that our light shines forth in this community we pray father that the church shines forth in this world of darkness and that you will, we know by faith that you will always guide her and protect her. For that, Father, we are thankful. We ask, Father, that you would bless Bren and Eli and the works here, bless Bren and his family, and we ask, Father, that you would continue to be with us in those things that we break forth, that we might always stand behind thy word, and that the truth that is proclaimed here would be taken and grafted into the hearts and minds of those who hear and who see that lives and hearts might be changed. We ask Thee, Father, that You would bless our country, continue to bless those in leadership here and throughout all the world. Bless those who are suffering at this time in war efforts in the Ukraine, and we pray, Father, for all of those who are in need of our prayer on our prayer list, for those who are suffering of our number. We ask, Father, that you would be with us as we go about further parts of this service this night. Father, help us to set aside the things that might otherwise be upon our minds, that we can sing these songs, listen to these words, listen to the lesson that's prepared for us to think about and to be of service to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the song that takes this evening. It will be number 414. Number 414. Now, the song for the lesson, number 924. Number 924. Love the Lord. I break it. Thank you all so much for allowing me to come and be with you tonight. And I've, thanks to Miss Peggy Finch that she is involved with Healing Hands doing a sewing project with them and donating her time. So I worked through her and she talked with the elders and they agreed to let me come and talk to you about the Magi Project. And I won't go into the boxes here formally, but afterwards, if you want to come down and look at these boxes, that we sometimes refer to them as boxes of love. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing for children. But we'll go into that here in a minute. And I've been involved with Healing Hands International since about 2004. The McKenzie Church has been involved with these boxes of love since about 1999. And they started in 1997. Healing Hands International is a humanitarian disaster relief kind of organization that works internationally, not in the United States particularly, but internationally. And they are supported 99.9% .9 by the churches of Christ around the United States. And they started this as a project with David Lipscomb students, marketing students, many years ago. And the teacher, who was the president of Healing Hands International, Randy Steger, gave them a project of what to do, how can we reach out and help children in the world. And some students came up with this thing. but. Uh, I've, I've been a member of the McKenzie Church for many years. I was born and raised in McKenzie, one of the elders there now, and I'm thankful to have my wife. She's involved in this Magi project that I'll mention here in a minute. But it's a great way to reach out to the kids. So I've got a bunch of slides here I'm going to go through, and we're going to talk about Matthew 19 here in a few minutes, and that's near and dear to my heart. <clears throat> but Magi... They just started calling it the Magi Project because of the wise men who came and, and brought gifts to the baby Jesus when he was born. And in that, I think it's the Hebrew word of that is translated Magi or wise men. Well, it wasn't long, but I guess six years ago, they decided to come up with an acronym or a, a, another name. And some young junior high girl said, came up with the acronym of Magi, making a godly impact. And that's what it does. It makes a godly impact 
upon the children as well as the family members. And uh, what some of these slides I'm going to show you concerns the project drive last year. And the, the main purpose of the Magi project, as I have witnessed, and for many years I always go down, and haven't since COVID, they shut us down down there, but I get to experience the distribution of these boxes. And I always tell people it's kind of like getting icing on the cake. And it, it's such a, a beautiful thing. But the one big thing it does is soften the hearts of people to be receptive to the Word of Christ. You know, if you want to get into the hearts of some grown-ups, get into their children's lives. Helping them, feeding them, nurturing them, whatever. You've probably experienced that, this, with your uh, nursery programs or the VBS and things like that. So if this project does nothing else, it softens a lot of people's heart to the Word of Christ, to the Gospel. Because our preacher, we work in the churches out in, in particularly in the country of Honduras. And I'm going to show you about Honduras. And that's where our thrust in McKenzie and all the boxes that we collect from the area churches around here in West Tennessee, we are a collection point. But we send these boxes to predominantly Honduras. We're looking forward to something else that I'll expose to you here in just a minute. Our goal last year for 2021 was 2,000 boxes, 2,200. And in actuality, we came up with 2,264. And praise the Lord. Every year we get more requests in Honduras for donations. So every year we try to bring in more churches or encourage churches to make more boxes. And it, it, people have been so generous. And particularly, I guess they, they see the impact of it that, as I'm exposing to you here. So one of the questions here is, how much do we care? And this is a verse that I want to read to us. We've read this many times before. But I want to read it again. Matthew 25 and 33 and the verses following. About 11 verses is what I will read. Matthew 25 and starting in 31. <clears throat> when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All of the nations will be gathered before Him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was, and here comes the big stuff that we all remember the verse from. For when I, for I was hungry. And you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. And I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous will answer in a surprising manner, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you what drink? And when did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you and or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And here's the power pack, the big punch that punches my heart every time I read it. Verse 40, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it unto me. So how much do we care? How much do we show our loving care? Not just abroad, but here to our neighbors and all of that. So I really take that verse serious and I apply it to this project, Magi Project. When we, when I talk to other brethren and, and my own brethren, encourage them, encouraging them to get involved in this because we're showing how much we care and, and that story right there really slams me to to be more active in reaching out to other people and doing as much as I can. Let me take you on a brief tour 
of Honduras, and it's a it's a beautiful country. It's uh, been called a country of immense beauty and immense poverty, and it's considered to be Central America. You can see the the arrows there of the United States, and if you drove a car down from through Mexico, and you'll come into the country of Belize, depending on your route, and then Guatemala, and then comes Honduras. And Honduras is kind of a diamond-shaped land that is bordered on the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean, or the Gulf, whichever you want to refer to it. And it's surrounded by these countries, as you can see, Guatemala and El Salvador and Nicaragua. And we have worked in all of these countries, or I have, but Tegucigalpa and Honduras, the area around the capital of Tegucigalpa, is where the thrust of these boxes go to. It, Honduras is considered one of the poorest nations in our world. Now, that's surprising. It is one of the Americas. But it is a highly impoverished country, which the poor of the poor, where we reach into, are super poor. And that's one of the things. But the beauty of it is it's amazing. It's kind of a, it's a volcanically created, I guess, many, many years ago. And it's a plush country of green. Temperature moderates somewhere between, uh, maybe in the highlands, it might get down to 60, and they're freezing to death when it's 60. It's about like when it's 10 degrees here. But somewhere around 75 to 85 degrees is all it, it changes. And they grow food in their yards of pineapples and coffee and so on and so forth. But it is a impoverished country. This is one of the houses that we found and delivered Magi boxes to. Had to drive a ways and then walk a ways carrying the boxes. And this is a, an, a common house that you'll see in the ultra rural area. They just build it out of mud and sticks the best they can. And you can see the numbers there possibly. If not, 65% of the people there in this country live in poverty. Now that's a 65% of poverty. And then you come on up and one in five of the people in Honduras live in extreme poverty. We come on into this next level house. I kind of broke this up into the, the lower class, middle class, and upper class. Really, there is no middle class down there. They're either poor or they're rich. But this is kind of a house you would see of, of a, might be a blue collared worker that he works in agriculture, maybe makes $10 a day, and he's glad to get it. And then you'll come on, and you'll see these type houses in rural areas, and they're both made out of adobe, but this guy here in this pink house, he has gathered enough money that he can put a concrete floor in his house, and he'll stucco the side and put paint on it. And when you put paint on your house, you're really somebody, because they don't, you just don't have a lot of money to waste on paint. So that's kind of the, the level. You see that poor, poor, and then the middle poor, and then the upper poor. And either way, they scratch out a living the best they can. The living conditions of their homes, are, are, it's very culturally adapted to the temperature and the climate, and a lot of it is open air. And this is the, a, a very common kitchen type of what you'll see. It'll just be a lean-to and their little adobe stove will be out there in the open air. And the dogs, I, I say the hog, dogs, ducks, and chickens help you cook. And the first year I went in 1998, I retired out of the Army National Guard. I worked full-time for them, 33 years. And we were in 98. And I went back in 99 to visit this family. I left a piece of my heart down there, so I go back every year I can to look for it. And I was sitting there in this, this family, and they were very poor people, no electricity and no running water. And she was cooking breakfast, and there was a cat sitting up on the windowsill. Now, this is just the old window is open, watching her cook my chicken, my fried chicken and eggs and rice. And two dogs were sitting at my feet, waiting for something to fall off my table. And the chickens were pecking up some of the little crumbs of the of the bread or the tortillas as she was cooking it and in here comes a hog walking through the kitchen <laughs> and, and that's where I've coined that the hog, dog, ducks and chickens so they cohabitate quite frequently but they're in a clean way by their standards 
This is a typical stove that you'll see down there. They make it. It's wood, and they'll poke the fire in. If they want it hotter, they'll just stick more wood in the throat of that. That this is this is called a Lorena stove, by the way. And they'll just turn up the temperature, and she can boil. She can boil water and cook on that top as good as you can on your Maytag or whatever it is. They're excellent. Again, they have just adapted to this and do a good job. They are survivors. Most of the roads out in Honduras in this rural area, you'll be mud or gravel, and they just maintain them. I call this a Honduran tractor. This is a John Deere tractor in Honduras in the rural areas, and it's an ox cart, and you might see a little eight, nine-year-old boy walking a big old bull ox or a bramer bull dragging a log or something and you know we wouldn't let our kids get near them but they just adapt and this is a ford f-150 right there and this is a ford f-250 diesel and this is this is typical this i'm not making this up but if you go into the rural areas of honduras these are their major commodities of survival and they'll haul their coffee or their frijoles, their beans or their wood that they're going to take down into the nearby village and sell to make a little money to buy their food and the commodities. This is a one bottom plow and they make these plows out of wood and they sometimes will put a little steel point. I saw one guy got real innovative and down here he had a metal tip but most of them are wood and they just rework them and just maintain them best they can. And they'll use an ox to pull this. And I refer to an ox, but it's, it's a bramer bull most of the time. Coffee is a big commodity. Coffee and bananas in Honduras. And this is your typical coffee tree. And when those berries, that's ready to pick. And they'll pick those berries, and then they have machines that'll hull them, take the, put, the seed out, and then they will air dry them just out on a concrete pad or a clean dirt pad and then they sack them up and take them to market by horses or vehicles if they have a vehicle. Every little village down there will have a Catholic church. If it's a, 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 a village of any substantial size, I'm saying a hundred people or more, they will make a type of structure like this. They are steeped in Catholicism. But ironically, if you ask them, what does it mean to be a Catholic? they probably can't tell you because it's just been since the Spaniards invaded back in the, I guess it would have been around the 15, middle, late 1500s, and they, the Spaniards brought in their Catholic beliefs. Well, it's, there's thought ones, thought Catholics there, but most are in these rural areas, they just go by title. That's just what I've always been called. But the structures are beautiful and they're old. And they have a lot of beautiful old people. Now down there, when you get to be 50 years old, and, these, and I'm always referring to the rural areas because that's where I like to work, out in the rural backwoods, untouched areas where tourists and a lot of mission teams don't get to. But you have a lot of beautiful people. But when you get to be 50, 55, 60, you're old. You've worked hard all your life. The weather's been tough on you. And uh, life just kind of has a way of knocking them down. But nonetheless, they're beautiful people. They are. But in this whole process, it's all about the children, what this Magi project is. It's all about the children. It does soften the hearts of men and women to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in my heart, and the big one of the big intents are is to put joy into the hearts of these children that otherwise at Christmas time or whenever the boxes get delivered to them, it just, these things they don't have there. They don't have the money to go to town and waste their money on these little nice things that we put in these Magi boxes. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's why I say it's all about the children. This next verse, it really, I still ponder upon it every time I read it out loud to congregations or read it myself. Then little children were brought to Him, Jesus, 
that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked him. Now that, that really grabbed me right. You mean they stopped the children? But yes, the disciples rebuked them. And no telling what they said. Get away. He, Jesus doesn't have time for children. But what happened? Jesus said, let the little children come to me. I would love to have been able to hear how he said it. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. Here's the power punch to me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Such a, And I pondered, what did he mean deeply? And I think he said that in a way to make us really have to think and struggle. What, what did he mean? You mean the kingdom of heaven is going to be filled with thousands and millions of little munchkins? I don't think so. But it's something about the hearts of these little children that Jesus was trying to tell us about. Something about their character. Maybe it was the, how they can forgive and forget and us adults can't. I don't know. But the bottom line of it is that Jesus, I think, loved children. And there's something special about them that you and I need to pay attention to or He wouldn't have said that. And I've just often wondered, what did the disciples think? They said, oh, I'm sorry. But children are special. So now I want to just kind of take you on a parade of slides to show you some of the faces of these little children. And these up and close pictures, every time I see one, my heart just kind of gets a little fuzzy about it. And... I, all, most 99% of these kids I, I know or have known, they, some of them grown up. Some of these pictures are maybe eight years old. These are a pair of little twins that I stay in their house every year that I go down there. They're twins. And uh, Ale, uh, Alexandria, Ale, Alejandria, and Kimberly. And when... When gringos come around, we're a novelty. Sort of like the circus is coming to town. You know? <laughs> and, and some of the little ones that, that where I have gone into, into the remotest areas, had never seen a, a bald-headed white man. I'm a novelty. I've had them come up and want to rub that thing. You, know, they, you don't see many bald-headed Hondurans. They, they're blessed. But this is a little girl that I met. Uh, she's... 13 now, but she was just a little infant in her mom's arms. And we were holding church service in the front yard of one of the ladies, one of the sisters. And this little girl here, Anjali is her name. And she was on her mama's shoulders. And I sat behind her. And she couldn't take her eyes off me. Again, I was probably the first bald-headed white man she'd ever seen. And I'd move around and them eyes just stayed fixed. And I started making faces and playing with But now she's my buddy. She's about 13 years old and she's a sweetheart. But let me do this. And I want to talk to you about how we make these boxes. In McKenzie, there are several ways that you can make them. And as you can see, we, we kind of set up a buffet style. My wife has a team of ladies. And they will. there's a laundry list of suggested items that Healing Hands has on their website. And you buy these items and you put them in the box. Well, what we have found for us that's most effective is we take the monies, donations, and the church puts in a big chunk there. And the ladies go out and buy each different item of this. The toothpaste, the toothbrushes, the, any of the toys, the hygiene articles, soaps, and dish rags, t-shirts, on and on and on. And then we will lay them out for on a particular week and we let all of the members of the church from down to the pre-k we have a, a preschool also and from all of the pre-k kids on up they will come in and they will get a box one of these boxes and by the way the boxes are free from healing hands international and i take orders from all of the churches and i go to to up there and pick them up and then bring them to you and they're unfolded flat but you fold them together and so each one of the little kids will grab a box and go down the buffet line and someone will put one of the articles. And it, we do that all the way up to what we call the prime timers, the old folks like me. So everybody gets to get their fingers on this box. 
and be a part of it. And for me, the big, the special part is when our children, the little pre-Ks on up into the youth group, get to do this. And they see these pictures. <coughs> I've presented this to the congregation many times, these, these slides and reports of Honduras after we would go down there. But they get to get involved in it. And that, to me, is, it makes it more super special. Our kids helping their children. And that's good. So what we do is, for example, this congregation, if you decide to do this, you'll make your boxes up and you'll either deliver them to McKenzie, which we are a collection center for West Tennessee, or I'll come and get them. <laughs> Offer free delivery or free pickup, whatever. And you'll come and uh, deliver the boxes over there and we store them in our hallways. And then on a prescribed day, and this year... September the 12th is the pickup or the last day that I, I need your boxes because Healing Hands is going to come down in the Bob truck and they bring these small, the larger cardboard boxes that will put 10 of these in each of those boxes and we have a packing day of which you're welcome and encouraged to come and help. And these are the little kids, even though they've helped make the box now, they're going to help pack them and we stick them in these boxes and then we palletize them there in McKenzie put them back in that bob truck and they take them to Nashville to Healing Hands to the warehouse and they write on saran wrap them and, and I have my name on there and the name of the preacher that's going to be receiving these 2,000 plus boxes for distribution he, Healing Hand puts them on one of these 40 foot containers it's a long process <laughs> And then it's taken down to the railroad station. It's about three miles from Healing Hands Warehouse. They take them on the railhead down to the shipping port, the Mobile or wherever it's going to be. Sometimes it's the East Coast. And they put them on a slow boat to Honduras. And in about two weeks, they arrive in Honduras, offload that container full of these boxes, pick up a semi-truck, takes the container all the way down into southern Honduras, Chaluteca, where we have a, another brother that has a big church mission called Mission Lazarus, and he kind of helps distribute all of them. Then they will separate our boxes from theirs, and, and by the way, Healing Hands will send somewhere around 20,000 plus down there. We send them to Africa, Mexico, some in the United States, and Romania and, and countries beyond. But they separate mine that are in my particular area of Honduras, put them on another truck, and ship them back up north to the central Honduras, put them in a church building there, and then the preachers there start distributing them out. And <clears throat> it's, it's a long process but that's, we, we found it to be very effective and uh, they get down there. They don't always make it to Christmas. We try to get it in the Christmas season, but we still today have some boxes that have not been distributed out. I think he was going to do finish it maybe last week, but it doesn't matter to the kids. We like to get them there for Christmas, but sometimes customs down there is, I won't say corrupt, but they're sometimes not nice. And they will impound our container because something is out of line. Because when they impound your container, they charge you a, a duty fee, a fine, you might say, each day. And they make money. And they look for bribes. And healing hands do not take bribes. And so that container may sit there a month just waiting on somebody to decide, yeah, let it go. We reach out to 31 plus now churches and schools. Some of the villages where we have preachers preaching, we will let give them boxes to go into some of the schools. And these schools may not be but 10 to 20 people, t children. But we feel like that's a good teaching, a reach out, outreach tool. And again, softening the heart. When their child, a, a parent's child, family's child brings home a box, where'd you get that? Well, you know, and, and we put little flyers in there. We welcome you to put pictures of yourself your children, if they are helping you, take a little picture of your children and you can write a little note on it. They, they don't read English, but they'll figure it out. Somebody around there will translate it. Makes it personable. 
But many of these 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 churches here are small, and a few of them are large. When I say large, that maybe 30, 30 churches. And I'm going to quickly go through some of the villages. I would call this is the preacher that our church sponsors down there, and his wife Rosario Tomas and Rosario Ochoa been down there. This is a little church building, very humble church building, but they're tickled to death to have it. And they'll have somewhere around 40 adults to maybe 50 children. Always a lot of children because these villages are small and kids come from everywhere just for the social gathering of it. And, and they sing and they'll have refreshments sometime. This is my little Angelia. She's a little older now. But just a beautiful thing. And again, I've been blessed to experience it firsthand to help distribute these boxes. Gracias Limpira, you can, Gracias is a tourist area, you can Google that uh, city. And uh, we have two churches out in that vicinity. This one is a little Gracias or Gracias church itself. It has probably 30, 40 members. And these little kids, you can see this boy, he looks like a a little dog looking in the, trying to find a bone or something. And when they open these boxes, and I've seen this multiple times, they'll g g gather in their little safe groups, their buddies. They don't just take the box and go out in the crowd and start opening it. They're very meticulous and careful, and they may not even open it. I've seen that where they won't even look in the box until they're gone home, I guess for fear of bullying and some other kid <laughs> taking their toys. But they'll gather in corners, but they'll have their little safety, but safe group around them or their moms and dads. And they'll, this is a little house that we discovered about four or five years ago on one of the roads out in the La Compa area. That's in the southern west, close to El Salvador. And we happen to have some extra boxes. When I travel, I'll try to carry uh, a few extra boxes in case we see a child along the road or something. We'll stop and just bless them with a box. And we pull over this little stick in adobe house. And this is the whole family that was living in this one little house, probably from here to the wall, and maybe about as wide. And I saw two beds in there, and they're not big queen size. They're little narrow beds. And you count the number of people there. And uh, we asked them if they'd like to have a, a box for their children. And of course, they gladly accepted. And this was in the years we used Tupperware to buy. And, uh, but it was just real heartwarming and heart-wrenching too to see because they were very, very poor family. It was a grandmother and a mother and daddy and their children there. And, I, and this one right here, she she never seen such as that. You know, she couldn't imagine. It, it was one of those balls that it would light up inside. And she'd shake that thing and it'd light up. She'd giggle. And uh, just very touching. These are my twins there. Baylin, Bethlehem, little outreach church near Gracias there. And this boy's name, Jesus, he's the preacher. And this is a little humble church building that we might call a tool shed, but it's the gathering of the Lord's people. And he is a go-getter. The congregation is growing, and they probably have a, a block building here before long. Villanueva is in the city of Tagus. We don't do much in the cities anymore, but it's just so dangerous. And but this is a big congregation we've been affiliated with since 2000. And this minister up there, he's a real firecracker, a good good preacher, and he's he spreads the gospel in this colony. They call them colonial area. That's Felipe. I call him a little preacher. <laughs> Felipe said, he's, that's what he said he's going to be. I want to be a preacher. We always take a group picture and let them, they, they love doing that. And they'll be squealing and squalling. Ohohona, that's an interesting name. You have to practice saying Ohohona. But it's one of those sayings, you just have to be there. 
to really grasp it. But every box that you make, you're making a big impact upon not just that one child. Something I've seen there multiple times is they are so sharing with their siblings. Unlike me and my brother, we didn't share. If it was given to me, he didn't touch it. I've seen it so many times that they'll get a little brother and give him candy or, or share a toy. And uh, I guess they're so used to not having anything that just something that had been ingrained in them all their life that we have to share to survive. And we have reached out into Nicaragua. This is a shoe shine boy. That's how he made a living for his family. He shined boots and did a good job. La Cienega was an area, this is another one of those Ford F-150s and loaded her Magi box and her daddy was going to lead her home in the mountain. This little boy named Dennis. Denny, De Dennis, Dennis. Every hair on his head grew in a different direction. <laughs> and you know his teeth, but he was a sweet boy. He's a little older now, but he'd come up and talk, try to talk to you. And they all hold a special place in my heart because I've experienced so much of life with them. And you can too indirectly and I'm always happy to come over and give reports. This church in Agua Catal where my preachers, our preacher uh, works and work, they have started a new church on their own. And you, they have planted a church on their own and that just excited us so much. And it's about five miles away, Los Encinos. So this is a new congregation that we'll be reaching out to. And they're probably around 15 members now. They, and the way they built it, we didn't help them except when they wanted to pour the concrete. They assigned each family to make so many adobe blocks. And so the families went home and made adobe blocks. And after they were cured out, they brought them to the church site and they stacked them. And when they had enough adobe blocks, they got the members together and they came and had a, had a house raising. And I, I just thought that was so, so neat that we didn't have anything to do with it. We helped pay for the concrete. But that was it. And they did the rest themselves little by little. We hope and pray this next year we're going to reach out into the Navajo Nation in Arizona. This Kayenta is west of Monument Valley, if anyone's ever been out there. And I had the privilege of working out in the Navajo through Healing Hands in the agriculture. That's what I worked with in the agriculture side of Healing Hands all over the world, in fact. But when I reached, we went into that Navajo reservation. I've always been a Cowboys and Indians fan. I, I was really stunned at what I saw. If you drive through Kayenta, and it's kind of a crossroad between Flagstaff, the Grand Canyon, and Monument Valley. So if you go out west, there's a good chance you're going to go through Kayenta. Well, you'll think it's a pretty nice little town. It's kind of rich looking and people doing well. That's the wrong thing. You're not seeing the truth of it. They're, the Navajo and all of the Native Americans in our country, the United States of America, are highly impoverished. Drugs are rampant. Diabetes, and that's why we were out there trying to teach them to grow good nutritional foods. Diabetes is rampant. Uh, obesity, and it's just, the, our Native Americans are wrecked. And these churches, there are a sprinkling of churches reaching out into these reservations. And so through my contacts there, we're going to hopefully use these boxes. And, and those, those Native Americans are still culturally ingrained with the old traditional Native American religious religions of the, the the medicine man. He he tells he comes out and does his rituals if you're sick and you go to the medicine man for wisdom and seeking visions. So Christianity is struggling out there to get in. And it's they're making inroads, but these boxes we think will help them and they do too, to open doors, soften the hearts 
of these some of the Native Americans to be receptive to Christianity, to Jesus Christ. And this is up in kind of the northern part of Arizona, Kayenta. You can see the, the picture there. And then we're, another area that we're going to reach into is in southern Arizona that we just made contact last year, Salt River Church, and it's down in the lower part of Arizona, right there in Phoenix, Mesa, Arizona. And that's where, Lord willing, we're going to take some boxes and try to get their own congregations involved in this. If nothing else, to soften the hearts of the people through the children. So, this is the Magi Project as we kind of see it and have it. I know you probably have questions. I'll be down front here, and my wife will, if you have questions about how we do it and orchestrate the, the gathering, the purchasing of the items. You can go online to the hhi.org, and you can read information about the Magi Project, and that's where the list is the, of suggested items. I encourage you to do it. I th whether you do it or not, thank you for allowing me to be here and expose you to it, and whether you do it this year or the next year or whenever, uh, just to, if you if you can do it, it'll be a blessing to a lot of children that otherwise will have nothing, and the potential of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But thank you so much. This last verse, I wanna I wanna tell you, I've read this many times, and you have too, and hopefully you got shook by it before I did. It took my old hard head a long time to really grasp it. And I guess it, it really took took seed in my heart after I st started going into these developing countries of Africa, working in several countries of Africa and Afghanistan and Europe and doing agricultural work through healing hands for the cause of Christ. But I read this John, 1 John 3, 6, and easy to remember where it is. Everybody knows John 3.16. Well, just put a 1 in front of it and turn to 1 John 3.16 and 17. And you read this. By this we know love because He laid down His life, He, Jesus, for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Just That's love. That's just love. But here comes the, the punch, as I say it. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his, his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? And Man, that caught me in that last part. My little children. There's that children thing that we read earlier. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now you ask yourself, do we have the world's goods? We sure do. Now I know it's pretty, it's going away fast <laughs> with high gas prices and our current conditions. But ladies and gentlemen, we are filthy rich here in this nation. It's still the best place to be on the face of this earth. And I've been around the earth. I haven't been to Australia yet, but I've been up and down the continents and of different countries and I always want to come back here. We are rich. We are blessed. And we have the world's goods. So what are we going to do with these world's goods? And we and, and I, I want to conclude with this. You don't have to get on a boat or a plane to do mission work. You know that. Your neighbor, it might be a mission field across the street from you or down the street or in a neighboring town. But that verse right there just <coughs> really, really caught me. So I'll conclude with Offering an invitation, as we always do. <coughs> I'm sorry. But, maybe something tonight has, has stirred your heart. If you're not a member of the, the Church of Christ, Christ's Church, then we always encourage you to do that. Become a member of His blessed family. And we are a family. You're part of the family in McKenzie, and I'm a part of your family of Christ. But if, if you haven't, don't delay putting on Christ in baptism and become a child of His and live that peace that we can gain and have <coughs> from being a faithful member. I'm about to choke down here. So, we'll conclude.
If there's anything we can do for you, pray for you if you are a believer, come now as we stand and sing. Father, thank you for this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that was shed on that cross. Let those that partake of it do so in a way which will be well pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. stand to be dismissed let's pray our most gracious dear heavenly father thank you for this day and thank you for all the many blessings in which you have given unto each one of us thank you for this time which we've had to come together to study more about thy word dear heavenly father thank you for the one that's come our way tonight delivered this message and the good work that he is doing and continue every day trying to help these kids and families in foreign countries. Dear Heavenly Father, may we take this lesson which we've heard today, this morning, apply them to our daily lives. May you be with the sick which were announced and forgive us for our sins and go with us till we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.